The National Training Center at Fort Irwin is known as a premier training venue that brings warrior skills to their peak. We got something of everything. Major General Ted Martin, Hilltops, NTC Commanding General, defiles, says out here in the high pops, deserts of California, the focus is on brigades and what it takes for them to fight. Pick it up. The National Training Center makes brigade combat teams ready for combat. Let me know when you guys are set. We train brigade combat teams so they are ready to win on whatever battlefield they are sent to. So you have a battle roster for the attack. I don't sit down here and dream up what we call the decisive action uh, training environment rotation. It's a collaborative effort led by the Chief of Staff of the Army uh, with the Commanding General of Forces Command and the Commanding General of Training and Doctrine Command getting together, coming up with an approved scenario. We have tanks, Bradley fighting vehicles, strikers, well-equipped infantry, aviation assets. We have an enemy here that has almost as good as we do. It's the home team, so they have a decisive advantage in that they know the terrain. From that aspect, we have a near pair competitor. We also know that at any place we fight in the future, there's going to be an irregular threat. That irregular threat could come uh, many different ways. It could be a guerrilla force. It could be an insurgent force. We know there's criminals out there. As we create this tapestry of a of a battlefield that we predict that we're going to have to fight on against an enemy we're not exactly sure who it's going to be. We know what components they're going to consist of and we weave those into our scenario out here. The brigade combat team that's in the box right now, they will face all of those problems and they will also uh, be confronted with a lot of innocent civilians on the battlefield because that's one of the big lessons that we've learned. Back when I trained here before 9-11, uh, there were no civilians on the battlefield. Now we have a training area that has a lot of innocent civilians. It has local governments. There are towns, city streets, all that to deal with. So we've got a, quite a complex environment, and we can tailor that based on wherever the unit uh, commander wants us to. So break it down for me, uh, some of the different aspects that you offer in training here. We make first contact 240 days out. We start to shape what the commander's training objectives are because that's what we're here to do. We're here to train their brigade combat team. Depending on uh, where the unit is and what we like to call the R4 Gen cycle, the unit gets established, it gets fielded with its equipment. Most, the most important aspect are the, the people, the soldiers and the leaders. And depending on where they are in their developmental process of training determines exactly what kind of rotation we will have. And we can do almost anything. We can do 14 days of force on force, or we can do a mixture of situational training exercises combined with force on force. But it's way more than just the 14 days in the box. If you go seven days on either side of it, it's about a 30 day trip to the National Training Center. You have to transport all of your equipment out here. Those are getting after skills we need because good news, we don't like to fight in the United States. We'd rather go someplace else. Soldiers learn how to railroad their equipment. They learn how to marshal and move their people by air. In some cases, ships, all of those things, they get after training staffs to the depth that we need because this is not a, a business for amateurs. We must be able to do way more than just pull the trigger. We have to be able to get there safely, rapidly. We have to do the intelligence preparation of the battlefield before we arrive. So there are, it takes about 240 days. We don't just pull the trigger and have a unit show up. One, four, agent, over. In the eyes of the Army, a rotation at NTC, time in the box, is for a brigade a culminating training event. We've got 1,200 square miles of beautiful Mojave Desert. We own up to 29,000 feet. We're connected with Nellis Air Force Base, Edwards Air Force Base, and all of that makes this a place where everything can be brought to bear in the training arena. How many military do you think the NTC touches in a year's time? Well, I can tell you exactly. We do 10 rotations a year, average about 5,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, depending on the composition. So, you know, ballpark figure, 50,000. What's the lasting impact on a soldier when he comes to NTC? It's not pulling the trigger. It's not driving across the desert. It's not flying through the air. It's leader development. Leader development is the number one deliverable I have, and we do it at Echelon. When you bring a brigade combat team, 5,000 soldiers here, Everybody gets trained 
on how to solve complex problems, all the way from the Sergeant E5 that is the fire team leader, or the, the very smallest fighting element of our uh, Army, all the way up to the brigade combat team commander and his command sergeant major. We've got a host of opportunities to develop their leadership capabilities in a tough, realistic combat environment, and it is hard. How do you factor your own personal combat experience into the training that's offered here? You know, I uh, entered the Army when the Warsaw Pact was our, our threat and the Reforge your mission to NATO was our number one. And then, you know, been with the Army through all the different uh, things that we've had to do. And I factor all of that, not just my combat experience, because really the, the combat experience that we would need to replicate a decisive action rotation, we really don't have right now because we're shooting for the future, what we think a future battlefield will look like. Doesn't most of your staff have combat experience? Absolutely, we all do. I think we're at 95% right now of my coaches, and that's very important. Uh, it gives us an edge. Uh, but we're, what we're doing now is we're falling back on Army doctrine. Lessons learned over the past 10 years, and then our core competencies, we've got phenomenal uh, doctrine produced by Training and Doctrine uh, Command verified by uh, leadership at all levels that we put into practice out here at the National Training Center. The primary users of NTC, according to Martin, are brigade combat teams. But he says the list of clientele also includes Marines, Navy, Air Force, and multinational military. Sometimes we have international partners at play. Recently we had the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force. We actually had Japanese tanks on the ground in California. And we learned a lot from them. We learned a lot from them, and they learned a lot from us. And then right now you have the Republic of Korea. You know, it's not just a bumper sticker slogan that we're shifting to the Pacific. The uh, first U.S. Corps up in Joint Base Lewis McCord from the 7th Infantry Division, those soldiers are training here today on the ground with a rifle company, a uh, Special Forces Operational Detachment, and a uh, crisis response team from the Republic of Korea. It's, it's, it's really unbelievable. Okay, so you've got the brigade combat teams, you have the international military. What about the reserve component? We don't do anything alone. There is no going it alone in this world, and, and our Army is no different from the rest of the Department of Defense. We rely very heavily on our reserve component uh, partners, both the National Guard and U.S. Army Reserve. In fact, on this particular rotation, we have a very large combat service support uh, battalion that's made up of all components. Uh, and they're doing a very extensive training exercise out here that reaches all the way back to uh, Hunter Liggett and uh, Camp Pendleton and the First Army, uh, which is responsible for assisting the training of the Guard and Reserve units. This is one of the few places where you're gonna see everybody that would show up on the battlefield. What represents your greatest challenge? Well, the greatest challenge is taking a unit and assessing them quickly as to what their capabilities are, and then on as we move through the training evolution, getting them to the absolute highest possible level of readiness that we can. It's a joint venture, us and them, and doing it safely. And that is hard government work. Can I ask you about budget? How has it hit you? Well, sure. Uh, we are like the rest of the Army. We're subject to the Budget Control Act of 2011. And you know, in the past, we had to deal with sequestration. Uh, another unique aspect of the National Training Center is this is not a green suitor operation. This is a combination of United States Army and Department of the Army civilians, and then a small element of contractors, depending on the type of rotation that we have. But of those Department of the Army civilians, almost a 1,000 of them here, they are key and essential to my mission. And when the, when the training budget gets crushed, it affects units' ability to train at home station because our expectation is that they will come in at a pretty high level of training so that we can take this 1,200 square miles, 29,000 feet, put it all together, and make the best possible unit. The ripple effect is units have not been able to train to that extreme high level of readiness uh, you know, that we're used to in the past. Think it will continue? We really don't know what the future holds. As the commander of the National Training Center, that uncertainty, that, you know, that weighs heavy on my mind. Get back, get back, get back, get back. The more time I get to plan, the better the rotation. One, two. Our mission is really simple. We train brigade combat teams for combat. 